Now, let's return to the nuclear debate. I told you we would have new polling on this issue tonight. It is shaping up as the major political contest ahead of the next election. And the question is that we're all asking, will voters support Dutton's plan for nuclear energy or will they buy Labor's fear campaign? Well, we've got new polling tonight from Freshwater Strategy and it shows that support for nuclear in the past nine months has gained five points to reach 37%. Meantime, support for renewables since May last year has declined 15 points from 74% to 59%. And support for non-renewables is up four points in the same period. And the same poll has shown that the Prime Minister is now only two points ahead of Peter Dutton, sitting at 43% to Dutton's 41% on the preferred Prime Minister survey. To break this down, let's bring in Freshwater Strategy Director Leo Shanahan. Leo, thank you very much for joining us. I'm so Good glad you've, you've brought us this polling because this is what it comes down to now. This nuclear debate is going to be the big political battleground ahead of the next election. What does your polling show about... And, and Labor's relying on the fact that Australians mm. don't want to have nuclear. What does your polling show about Australian sentiment? Well, I think it is interesting, Shari, because as you mentioned at the beginning, uh, nuclear is on the rise in terms of support. Now, comparatively, compared to solar, uh, gas is actually hugely popular as well. Uh, not as popular, it's, but it is more popular now, according to our polling, uh, than coal, which is already in the system and very much needed in the current environment. Here we are in the middle of winter. Mm. Um, but look, at 37% in our polling, that's up five points since June last year. Uh, sorry, since September, just mm. September last year. And that is not an insignificant rise. And it's also coincided with this increasing awareness uh, around nuclear. So, to your point, if the government wants to turn the next election into a referendum on nuclear, mm. it does probably have to be a little careful in the way it constructs that argument, as we've seen these early rollouts of memes <coughs> and, you know, three-eyed fish, et cetera, mm. Simpsons references. Uh, but it has to be a little careful that in doing... Uh, that people don't start to educate themselves a lot more on nuclear and the benefits of nuclear and decide this is perhaps not as scary as we thought. And in campaigns sometimes, when one side pushes so hard so early, mm. uh, there is sometimes a corresponding pushback from people to say, hang on, uh, shouldn't we have some awareness of what this is actually about and mm. rather than just rely on uh, knee-jerk fear-mongering. It's interesting that the period over which uh, support for nuclear has risen uh, coincides with when Peter Dutton um, said that he was going to have a nuclear policy. Yeah. He was going to take one to the next election. So, you know, perhaps this also is an indication that he's able to mount an argument and he has the time to convince Australians. And you know what? The, the fear campaign might not be as effective given we, we look around the world and we see what other nations are doing. Yeah, it's... We're, there's we're, no three-eyed fish in France or Canada or the US. Yeah, and, and we I are know. the outlier, in, really, in the G20 in terms of nuclear. And many aren't... Uh, I think one of the few is Indonesia uh, that don't have nuclear and they're looking into it as well. So, I mean, I think it's interesting because it's also coincided uh, with an increasing, shall we say, mm. uh, scepticism about the ability of renewables yep. uh, to solve all our problems. We ask a question kind of based purely upon your preference. Would it be for renewable energy sources uh, or non-renewable energy sources? And, yes, renewable energy sources are still very high, still very popular, generally speaking, uh, at 59%. But that is a pretty steep decline Massive, uh, from really? 74%. Uh, just since September, and non-renewable non sources growing from uh, about 14 to 18 percent in the cost same amount of time. At cost the same of living time period. Exactly. Yeah. So all our polling shows number one in terms of concern, cost of living. One, two, and three. Yeah. You know, number one issues. But, but Leo, I want to ask you about. You know, Albanese had a very long honeymoon. What does your polling show about? Um, you know, his favourability, how voters are looking at him and Peter Dutton 
um, in, in terms of their preference for who would be PM? Yeah, well, I mean, on that primary vote, that kind of key primary vote, we've got the Liberal Nat National Coalition up at 40%. That's unchanged since our last poll. Labor down to 32%. So there's actually an eight-point gap uh, in that primary vote and news poll out last week had very, very similar numbers. Mm. Now, what is interesting in terms of preferred Prime Minister, uh, we're now looking at almost uh, dead even, you know, 41 43%. Another poll out this week had those polls, gotten ahead. You know, we should just remind people that the preferred Prime Minister measure, that usually favours the incumbent. It usually favours the sitting Prime Minister because they're already in the job. Definitely. And it's pretty rare for, a, for an opposition leader who isn't in an election-winning position to start getting ahead or get ahead in, in, in preferred prime minister. Mm. So there would be a lot of comfort drawn uh, in Peter Dutton's camp on those numbers. And a lot of numbers. panic at Labor side, you'd have to think, well, if their polling is showing the same. Maybe not panicking yet, but, uh, yeah, if that maybe they'll be rethinking uh, that election timing. Yeah. All right. Leo Shanahan, thank you very much for Thanks, joining Sharon. me.